Welcome back to the Thornton 100 YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be assembling my personal motorbike, which has some very special options, as you can see. So stay tuned to see how we build this thing from a standard bike into what it is now, and to also see what I'm gonna be using it for. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so step one of this build is for us to visualize what it's gonna look like. And over here, we have the big screen and we're in our sales suite and I've got the iPad in my hand so we can kind of get an idea as to what this bike's gonna look like with some of the weird options that I've spec'd on it for my personal build. So obviously this bike's gonna be used for a bit of touring so we've absolutely packed it out with Krieger luggage, which we will check out in a bit anyway. So. Over here we have a standard V4 build and I'm going to add on the parts and explain, you, uh, explain to you what we've added and, and why it's there. So first one we've got is the tank bag. So if you're across the channel tunnel and you know how much of a nightmare it is balancing your helmet, your gloves, your passport, all that kind of crazy stuff as well. It's nice just to have a bag on top where you can put everything and it's right there where you need it. So I'm going to flick through now. So we've got uh, a few more options coming through now. So this is the auxiliary lights as well. So just in case we go in any long tunnels or we go through or we get caught out in the dark, it's nice just to have that extra light there. And they're mounted to the engine guards that we have here as well. So highly unlikely, but if I do drop it, then we're gonna be protecting the engine with that too. So the exhaust, we're gonna have a twisted pipe as well. So we are gonna be making a fair bit of noise, but the good thing about these twisted pipes is when you just roll off the throttle and you're just chilling, they do kind of tend to cancel themselves out. You can have a bit of a quiet ride. So they're only loud when you're really gunning it as well. So moving forward, we've got the front strap here as well. So again, highly unlikely, but still a very cool option that if we do need to kind of pull that bike, then we can jump on that front hall loop there and pull it up. So this is a US 20 and a US 40 um, from Krieger, and they are going to be mounted to our passenger seat at the back here as well. So that's one that comes all the way back and then we're gonna have the rack on top of there and then I'm just gonna mount all my luggage. So ten and everything will go on the bottom, clothes and everything will go on the top of that and I'll have more clothes in the front pocket, in the front US5 there as well. So obviously we're gonna go for the gold chain, gonna replace the chain on that one as well. We've got some cool Thornton 100 logos going on the side panels there because obviously we've got a rep and then we've got a really cool Krieger logo going in there as well. Uh, paint wise, I've chosen um, this color and this is actually called BMW Champagne Quartz. I've wanted to do it for ages and I just really like the color and I think it's gonna pop in that sunshine there. So it's a really cool looking bit of kit. We've got all the cool sort of dual sport style tires as well. Plenty of mileage in those, so that'll be fantastic. So a really cool looking bit of kit. So what we're gonna do now is head downstairs, check out the Krieger stuff that's gonna go on the bike and then check out the standard bike that I'm gonna be using too. Okay guys, so here is the bike. You might recognize that it's actually a Bobber Black, a 69 Reg. The reason being is because I didn't want to use a brand new bike to go and put thousands and thousands of miles on. So the, being a Bobber Black, it's got the smaller nine litre tank, so we will be swapping that out, but it does have the heavier, older style crankshaft in it, 17 kilograms, which should be great for torque and driving out of those super tight corners that we're gonna be on and riding in with the Alps. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start breaking this bike down. I'm gonna pull Evan in to give me a hand and we're gonna pull it all the way back down to the engine and the frame, ready to reassemble into a super lightweight adventure monster. So luggage wires on this bike, Krieger have sorted out and we've got loads of stuff, basically raided the entire Krieger catalog. So we have a tank pack converter. So this will just strap on the top of the tank there and give us a nice base to anchor everything onto the tank from, which is going to be our US5 dry pack as well. So that's gonna be a really cool bit of kit. And then we're gonna have the US40, which will go straight on the back of the rack there. This one's actually got a tent in it already right now. Then we're gonna have the US20, which will go on top of that, and I'll keep my clothes and everything in that one there. So we've got the Moto Gadget MoView glassless mirrors over here. So this means if we get any rocks flicking up or if I just bash it off something as well, I'm not gonna be smashing mirrors and not being able to see. We've got the carbon wheels, which are kind of a legacy left over from the super light projects that we did as well. So click the link in the description below and you can check out those projects too. So I really like these wheels, they work so well. They're super tough, tubeless, which is nice so I can fix punctures on the go. And we have different gearing on these as well. So we'll be able to really get out of them corners and accelerate nice and hard. We have 
some peer lights as well. So really cool bits of kit. So lots of other little bits that I'm sure I'll figure out that I want as we go through and this build is going to develop and probably go more and more adventure, more and more street and more kind of suited to the touring that I know that I like to do and uh, kind of tailor it to fix the problems that I've had whilst doing long motorcycle tours as well. So next step is to get this thing completely broken down all the way back down to the frame and the engine. And then once we've got all of these pieces and components lined up, then we can start the rebuild. And I'm very excited to ride this for the first time. around as stripped down as it's going to be right now so as you can see all the back end's gone the front end's gone I've still got to swap over the steering yokes but what I've done is I've just taken the rocker cover off and the generator side cover and what that allows me to do is spin the engine round to get this thing timed up correctly so what I'm going to do now is take off the rocker cover and the rocker cut and the cam holders and then what that allow me to do is change the cam for a cam with a higher lift and a slightly longer duration as well so what that will allow us to do is have the inlet valve open for a little bit longer, get a little bit more air into the combustion chamber here to get a bigger bang when we do ignite the ignition as well. So what that's gonna allow us to do is just make a little bit more power on this bike as well. So it's gonna be interesting to see the difference in the boosting power on this. So it's a slight, just a slight little mod, but something that I wanna do with the carbon wheels as well, it should allow this bike to accelerate a lot harder too. So what I'm gonna do now is swap that out and then we can start reassembling the bike. Over the weekend, I've put the cam in the bike and I've put all the rocker cover back on now, so hopefully we'll see some good figures come out of that when we take it to dyno. Uh, so now I'm just gonna start putting in the rear shock, the air boxes, and then we can move on to the other parts like the yokes and stuff like that and really start building this bike up to the adventure spec bike it's gonna be. It's not even in the right way. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Still, I'm smiling still, it's okay. I'm crying inside. <laughs> Stay there, oh my god. 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's funny. It's hilarious because it's not me. It's not even funny, look. <laughs> I'd rather not, I'd rather I didn't do that. So we're nearing completion on my 
expedition kind of adventure style bobber build here and this thing looks absolutely fantastic i've got the personalized Thornton 100 Jody number plate on the side there. I didn't opt for the wrap around because we've got the luggage rack on the back here. I didn't want to completely hide that rear wheel. And this is going to act like a really good mud guard as well if it does start raining. But we've got the leather seat on. I wasn't too sure on the brown. It's going to be very hard wearing, but I think once we get the whole bike together, I think this is going to really work very well. So we're actually machining some high ground clearance foot pegs on this one as well. So when I'm carving those canyons, in the Alps, I need to make sure that we've got plenty of ground clearance. So we've actually modified how the side stand sits. So we've got more ground clearance there and this will be going too. And then we're gonna have those high ground clearance foot pegs, which is hopefully gonna be really nice as well. So moving around the front, we've got the Krieger Hall Loop, which is more for enduro bikes, but it does look really cool. And it also allows me to be able to put a big bunch of cable ties on the front here as well, just in case. It's always great to, when you're touring and that, just have easy access to things as well. And then we've got the Krieger Neoprene Fork Guards as well. These are actually designed for USD forks, but we've put them on here, so the K is upside down, but that's okay. I'm sure that'll be fine. So Calm wheels look absolutely fantastic, and we've got the Dual Sport Dunlops, uh, Dunlop Mutants as well on here. So it's gonna look really cool. So we've still got the engine guards to go on. We've got them big auxiliary lights. So if we do go through any dark tunnels or we end up in a cave or whatever, uh, then I'm gonna have enough light to keep everything lightened up as well. So we're gonna get the quad lock clamp and mount on the handlebars there and all of the damper. And then I'm gonna get the weatherproof wireless charger on that as well. So I can have all of my phone and sat nav and I'll be using my phone to navigate uh, to make sure that we can get to where we need to be. So it's really coming along now. I'm really happy with the build. So next up, we've got to put the tank on, get all of the engine cage on and then take it over to the dyno and see what kind of numbers this bike is gonna make. So we're back from the dyno. Richard at TCS has sorted us right out with this bike. So what we've managed to do is remove the limiters and all of the speed restrictions in all of the gears as well. So from the factory, the bikes are restricted in first, second and fourth and fifth and sixth. And the reason being is to limit speed and is also to limit power wheelies and stuff like that. But we want all of those things. So factory, these bikes make around 67 horsepower at the rear wheel. And this bike now makes 81.2 horsepower. And I'll put a photo of the dyno graph right here. And that means that this bike is gonna be absolute great fun to ride in those twisty Alpine roads as well. So what we've got to do now is get the rear rack on get the side bars on with the external pier lights and then get the quad lock on and this bike will be nearly ready to rip.
love it guys. My personal bike all done and dusted and I personally think it looks absolutely fantastic. This color was off a 7 Series BMW and this brown seat looks absolutely fantastic. I was a bit skeptical at first when we put it on but now seeing it on the bike it looks really really good as well. So, so taking it on its first test ride I noticed that with these new high ground clearance foot pegs that we actually had a clearance issue with the bottom of the exhaust so as you can see i've just chopped it off for now so we may come up with a neater solution however we're a little bit pressed for time as we head into the week that i'm going to be leaving as well so they are fantastic bits of kit though those pegs so you can get it right lent over as well and we're nearly at the point where we're scraping the frame so hopefully fingers crossed we don't be doing that in the alps but this is going to allow me to keep up with some of the bigger boys on the adventure bikes and the sports bikes too so Krieger have absolutely sorted this out with some of the most fantastic kit as well. So we've got the US5 tank pack, we've got the US40, and then we've got the US20 here as well, which gives us 65 litres of luggage space. So all of my tent and sleeping mat and chair and all of that good stuff stays in the bottom here. Then we'll have all of my clothes in this top pack. So when we do get to where we're going, I can just remove that. That's if we do stay in a hotel or something like that, we just take that straight off. And then we've got the US 5 right here in front of me so I can keep my wallet and my passport and my phone and all those important things right in front of me here. And I can easily access them if I need them too. So, so I'm really excited to get out and actually use one of my creations and really enjoy it because I do get to build them. However, I never really get to use them and and all of the customers get all the fun. So it's gonna be a really good test bed as well to be able to see exactly what we might need to tweak in future versions of our Thornton Hundreds as well. And also guys, I'm gonna be giving you a full review of what this bike was like to ride in the Alps and tour most of Europe on this really cool bit of kit. So make sure you subscribe for that next video and I'll catch you on the next one.